Have you ever wondered and asked yourself what the Bible means by saying that uh, God blotted out our sin? Or God will blot out our sin or transgression? Have you ever asked yourself what does the Bible really mean? Because there are several passages of scripture uh, in the Bible which refer to God's promise uh, to blot out our transgression or our sins. Especially when you look at the book of Isaiah 43, 25, the Bible says, I, even I, I am he that blotted out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and I will not remember thy sins. Uh -huh. And also, twice in the book of Psalms 51, David prays for the Lord to blot out his sins. Now, you may wonder, Actually, what, what does really blotting out mean? If When God says, I blot out your sin, what does he really mean? Let's come and check um, in the Strongs. We see what the word uh, uh, blotting really means. It means uh, to be wiped out, to be blotted out, to be exterminated, uh, or to abolish, destroy, you know, put out, reach unto, utterly wipe. Do you remember when the, Jesus said, when uh, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to be baptized, and he said that, he, be, behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away, takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is coming to utterly wipe out, to take out, to abolish, to take, Come on, my friends, my friends, this, this, this is so, so much amazing to understand what the Bible means when it says blotting out. It's like God, have, have you ever had a blister somewhere and you blot out the blister? That's exactly what God is going to do to those who believe in him. And uh, when we see this, we understand that uh, the picture, uh, the picture we have in our mind whenever we think about sin is that there is a record book of sin. And truly, there is a book recording every sin of, the, of every person out there. If you're, if you're not a believer, there is a book recording your sin. And this is a book which God is going to blot out, is going to wipe out. Let me show you that book. You know, many people might be thinking, uh, we are not... Keith, how sure are you that there is a book recording our sins? Look here. And I saw the dead, small, great, and rich. This is Revelation 2012. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. This during judgment, the, the great white throne judgment. And the books were opened. You see, there are some books which will be opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Now, this book of life, who is life? Life is Jesus. So if you're not in the book of Jesus, you're in the other books. And the dead, because remember we are alive in Christ. So we're not dead. So the dead are the sinners. And the dead were judged according uh, out of those things which are written in the books. According to what? Their works. Not according to their faith, but according to their works. So anything you do is recorded in, in some book. Is recorded. You sin is recorded. You lie is recorded. You 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 steal is recorded. Whatever kind of sin that you do is recorded, my friends. Is recorded, and this presents a similar picture of the dreadful, that white great white throne judgment. Whenever you hear this, you always have that picture of that great white throne judgment, which the dead, the people who never believed will be judged according to what they have done as recorded in those books. And the psalmist David was keenly aware of his sin. Remember when David sinned with Bathsheba? And uh, he knew, he knew this, the, the, his record has been recorded somewhere, okay? Uh, let me just write, uh, show you here. Uh, Psalms 51, verse 3, okay? David knew. And that's why he was crying to God and telling him, please blot out those sins, please. Because that time, there was no indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So there was no sealing. 
of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit could come and go, come and go. That's what the, uh, David was telling uh, God. Please do not take away your Holy Spirit away from me. Don't take your spirit away from me. Because if you take him away from me, it's going to be disastrous to me. Are you seeing the point? Now, let's read here. Psalms 51, 3. For I acknowledge my transgression. David is saying, oh Lord, I know, I know I've sinned with Bathsheba and I know all those things. And my sin is ever before me. And against thee, thee only, have I sinned. He's not saying I've sinned against Bathsheba, no. Or against Uriah, no. I've sinned against you because you're the one keeping that record, that record of sin. And done this evil in thy sight, that thou might be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. You see, God does not judge you because he's an evil God. No, he judges you according to what you've done. He's just. When he's sending people to hell, God is just. You see, there are people who say, oh, God is so bad, he's sending people to hell and blah, 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 all those kind of things. No, I don't think so. God is just. If he's sending you to hell, he'll send you justly. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He's trying to plead with God. Behold, thou desirest truth in thy inward part, parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You see, wisdom comes from God, doesn't come from man. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You see, David is not saying, I'm going to change, I'm going to be a good person. No, he's telling God, God, please, wash me. It is only you who can wash me. It is only you who can change me. Are you seeing the point here? Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bonds which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, Lord, and blot out all my iniquities. Are you seeing what David is saying? He wants God to blot out his iniquities. Blot out, Lord, because I can do nothing without you. Because is this God who is keeping the record? So if it's him who is keeping the record, he's the one who can blot out that record of sin. Are you understanding the point? That's why David is telling God, have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And this one tells you, looking at this, it tells you that, my friends, you can't get to heaven by your own righteousness. You can say, oh, I've stopped sinning. Now I think I can go to heaven. I'm a good person. I think I can go to heaven. I think uh, I was baptized because uh, I can go to heaven. I think uh, I've given to the poor. No. It is only God himself who can blot out your sin. Are you getting the point here? And when you go to the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah um, 43, verse uh, 25, we see God is the only one who has the ability to wipe away our spiritual defilement. Okay? Our spiritual defilement. Am I in Isaiah 43? Sorry. Uh, Isaiah 43. I typed 34. <laughs> 34. 43 verse 25. Okay? It is only God who has the, that ability. To wipe out our spiritual defilement. See, I, even I, I am he that blotted out thy transgression for mine own sake, and I will not remember thy sins. God is going to blot out your sins. He's going to wipe out your sins himself. You, you, you can go to a priest to confess your sins to a priest like the Catholics do, and you think that that priest is the one who is going to blot out your sin? No, 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 no. He doesn't do that. The priest is as a sinner as you are. You don't know what he was doing yesterday. He was drunk, maybe uh, slept in brothels and did all those kind of things. And now you're going to him to pray to him to forgive you your sins? I think people are really fooled. Huh? You can be fooled by these people. Now, to the praise of his glory, he is a God who forgives his children. Okay? God forgives his children. Because he says that I have blotted out your transgression like a cloud and your sins like mist return to me for I have redeemed you. My friends, 
God has redeemed us. If we believe in him, he will redeem us and he will make us new creatures. Okay? You know, if God would have uh, refused to blot out our transgressions or our sins, this could purely be a very severe judgment. Just let, let me show you something in Nehemiah. Nehemiah 4 verse 5. See this one. If God refused to blot out our sin, hey, my friend, you'll not survive. And cover not their iniquity, and let, and, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. If God was to refuse to blot out your sin, you will have provoked God to anger. And who can withstand the anger of God? Who can? Remember, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, when Jesus will come back the second time, he will come back and he will fight as God fights in the day of battle. And who shall stand, my friends? When you provoke God to anger, who will stand? It is only him who can help you out. Let me show you also something else here. In Jeremiah 18 verse 23. Just check this out. Yet, Lord, thou knowest all thy counsel against me to slay me. You know, you know, you know, Lord, all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity. Uh -huh. Neither blot out their sin from thy sight, but let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. Here Jeremiah is speaking. And he's talking about the people who are against uh, uh, him. And they want to slay him. And he's telling God, God, please don't, don't blot out their, their, their sin. Deal with them as you deal with people in the time of your anger. If this one is happens, do you think those people are going to survive, my friends? Do you think they are going to survive? I don't think so. I don't think so. And you have to understand, although our sins eh, are so many, God has mercy. To those who have faith in Jesus Christ, his son, God applies the blood of Christ in our sin, to our sin, and cancels the debt that we owe him. Jesus canceled the record of the charges against us and nailed them at the cross. Colossians 2.14, just start from 2.13 to, to 14. And you'll understand, because the Bible tells us in Colossians 2.13, just before 14, it says, and you being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, and then blotted them or nailed them at the cross. My friends, this one explains that uh, it is very important for God to blot out your sin. Because if he doesn't, it's going to be terrible terrible is going to be so much bad let's see a couple of other translations what do they say about colossians 2 14 just see other versions like new living translation says he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it on the cross he canceled the record god wiped out the charges that were against us wiping out Okay, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. He did this by erasing the charges that were brought against us by the written laws God has established. God took the charges away by nailing them on the cross. My friends, God did something for us. He blotted out our sins. And uh, in the ancient times, people ha uh, uh, hand wrote deeds, receipts, and bills with reed or uh, quill paints, pens, and uh, black ink. 
which was made of uh, soot, gum, and water. And when they made a printing mistake on a document, other than the scriptures, of course, not, not the scriptures, they chose probably to blot it out with ink. And uh, they rewrote the letter or word correctly and moved on. And the mistake had to be covered. So there was a way that they blotted out their mistake and moved on. And uh, this is a picture of the blotting out of our transgression. Our sin must be made right if we are to fit for God's presence. And the only substance, the only substance that can cover our sin or cleanse our sin, just like in this ancient text, okay, the way they used to erase using something, the only thing which can erase our sin is the blood of Jesus. The blood of God's only son who was slain for our sake. And under the Old Testament law, God allowed the substitution of bulls, sheep, and goats. Remember in the book of Numbers uh, 29, 11, God allowed those kind of bulls and goats and all that. And also, you can go and check Leviticus 6, 25 and Second uh, Chronicles uh, 29, 24. And when their blood was spilled, it is symbolized what God intended to do when he sent his Messiah to be the final propitiation for sin. Remember back in the days when the, 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 the blood of gods and bulls was applied. It was only for covering the sin. It was not taking away the sin. It was not taking away the sin. It was only for covering the sin. But when Jesus came, he became our propitiation. Romans uh, 3, 25, it tells us that Jesus was our propitiation. C come on, j just look here. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and justifier of them which believeth in Jesus. Now, just look at this verse. Why is boasting then? Why are you boasting and saying, it's because of me that I'm saved. It's because of myself that I'm saved. It's because of the things that I did that I'm saved. Why is boasting? Why are you boasting? It's ex excluded. By what law of works? No, by the, the law of faith. If you believe in Jesus, then your sins are blotted out. It's not by any law, any work that you do. And therefore, we can conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. My friends, let me show you here in First John, First John uh, two verses two. What does the Bible say? And is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Has he blotted out your sin? Has he blotted out your sin? First John 4 uh, verse 10. See this one. Hearing his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We, we, it's not because we did anything good. It's not because I was a good person. I, I went to church and then uh, you see because I went to church, God saved me because I went to church. No. My friends, we were evil and wicked and reprobates. But God loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We were loved. With Jesus' shed blood, God blotted out the transgression of every person. Okay, I don't know if, where is it? God blotted out the transgression of every person. Blotting out transgression of, of every, every person who comes to him uh, uh, by faith or in faith. If you have faith, God will blot your transgression. Because the Bible tells us very well, 
in the book of John 3 16 this is the most famous verse for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but will have everlasting life the only way God can blot your sins is through faith in the one that he sent because verse 17 of John 3 it says for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but the, that the world through him might be saved God did not send Jesus to come and, and condemn the world like the boy people think he did not come to condemn anyone he came so that you may be saved so that he can blot out your sin because you are dead in your sins and also as the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew 26 28 it says for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for the remission of sins my friends do you believe that blood which was shed do you believe that blood which was shed god is very merciful and he loves us so much he loves us so much let me read for you something here in psalms 103 verse 25 just see the love of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Uh, to, sorry, sorry, sorry. Psalms, Psalms uh, 103, verse 25. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Oh, let me just go down here. Let me just. 103, 25. Why is it not coming up? Uh, wait. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just supposed to be reading the same one. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm saying 25. I don't know where 25 came from. Uh, Psalms 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are these benefits of God? This is where I wanted to show you. Who forgives all thine iniquities? Who heals all thy diseases? Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? These are the benefits of God. He forgave us our iniquities. He blotted out. This is the point where I was looking for. He blotted out. And those who have had their transgressions blotted out, my friends, by the blood of Jesus, they are forgiven and they will spend eternity in heaven with him. Because without Christ, without Christ, you can't spend that eternity. Your sins will remain if you're not, they are not blotted out by Jesus. And they remain in that dark stain of the soul. And the fate of the unforgiven people, the people who have not had their sins blotted out, do you know their fate? Their fate is eternity in hell. Those who have not had their sins blotted out, they will spend their eternity in hell. My friends, do you want to spend your eternity in hell? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the all the world but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example. You see, all these things happen as what an example unto those that after should live ungodly. This thing, the same thing will happen to them. Let's just read up to verse 10. And deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexes his righteous soul from the day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. I don't know what to say more. 
You understand? Let me just read this one more. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presum presumptuously, they are, are they self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities and things like that. But you see, the Bible tells us very well, the people who don't believe and who do not have their sins blotted out, this is going to happen to them. They are reserved for the day of judgment to be punished. Do you want to be punished? I don't think so. Luke 12, 4, verse 5. I'll just quote it. It, it tells us, Jesus says, And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, they have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you, whom shall you fear? Fear him, which after he has killed, he has power to cast into hell. I say unto you, fear him. Unless Jesus blots out your sin, you should fear the one who can destroy your body and soul in hell. No amount of sincerity, religious uh, favor or good deeds on the credit side of our lenders can blot out our transgressions. Only the blood of the spotless lamp of God can blot out, can blot out your transgression, okay? Only that blood, only that blood of the spotless lamp of God can blot out your sins and erase your debts and make you clean before God. Do you believe in that lamp of God? Do you believe in that lamp of God? You see, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 John 1.29 that the next day Jesus sees, uh, I mean, the next day John sees Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the lamp of God which takes away the sin of the world. Jesus took away your sin 2,000 years ago while you were still sinners. Jesus died for you. And in the book of Hebrews 13, to 14 it tells us for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an ephah sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of christ how much more my friend my, my brothers and sisters how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it explains what Jesus did for us. That Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again. The third day according to the scriptures. If you believe that he did that, all you need to do is confess what you have believed. You only confess what you know. That's why the sinner's prayer cannot save. But you only saved by believing, then you confess what you believe. Just tell Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins, you are buried. And rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe you and I put all my trust in you. And I receive that payment, that atonement by faith. And you'll be saved. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have understood. And hope you're looking forward to that day. When you'll be with Christ for eternity in heaven. If you enjoyed these videos, please give them a like. And also you can uh, uh, share to your friends. Let them hear the good news. Subscribe also to watch uh, more videos which we post every day. We have a lot of teachings. Please just go to the playlist and you'll be able to see them. And also, of course, uh, if you can uh, hit the notification bell, it will be so great. So that whenever we post a new video, you can always be notified. And likewise, at the description, we have a couple of other channels apart from YouTube that we also post. Go and check them out and share to your friends, brothers and sisters. God bless you.